Hey family, welcome back to Kingdom Huddle. If this is your first time tuning in, I am Wilma Parker. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy holiday season to tune in to this channel. Listen, because we are family, I want to share something with you. I was recently invited to speak at another women's event, and this time it was in Kannapolis, North Carolina, at the Promise Worship Center Ministry, where the pastor is Pastor Keith, and his wife is First Lady Dorothy. I had an amazing time. This was actually their first women's event, and the title, the theme of the event was Rainbow of Promises. Rainbow of Promises, and it was so good, y'all. It was awesome and naturally i spoke on the scripture from genesis chapter 9 verses 12 through 17 talks about the story of noah the great ark and the great flood and it was so many great nuggets that i'm not going to give away just yet because you're going to see later on in this um, kingdom huddle but at the event i really wasn't going to record it i didn't record it but holy spirit led my cousin janet to go ahead and record on her phone and she was able to capture pretty much all of the message and i'm so grateful to her because i believe that the message that god gave me which was god is a promise keeper god is a promise keeper i believe that message not only blessed the ladies at the event but i believe that it's going to bless you as well so because we're family i'm sharing this with you and i know that god is going to speak something to your heart during this um this holiday season when so much is going on and so many hearts may feel heavy and so many people may feel like god where are you in the midst of all of this God is telling you, I am a promise keeper. I am faithful. I am trustworthy. I got you. So I know that you're going to enjoy this message. Stay tuned. Thank you so much, Laura. Is it First Lady Dorothy? First Lady Dorothy. I know. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you and congratulations to you, Pastor Keith, for this mm -hmm. new assignment mm -hmm. that he has you all on. I know it's going to be amazing. Um, one thing that I do want to say, though, is one thing that I truly love already about your ministry is the name promise worship center yes. you know because oftentimes as children of god we don't really know what we have access to we really don't know what we have access to and my cousin tanya she loves to say we don't know what comes in our benefit package but with the name like promise worship center it tells me not only do you know what you have access to but you're willing to Stand on it and claim it. And I know that God's going to bless that. So I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for you all. So let's bow our head for a word, a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this event, God. I thank you, Lord, because quite few of us had to press our way to get here, God. But I thank you for removing every roadblock that the enemy tried to put in our minds, in our bodies, in our health. God, I thank you, Lord. Thank I you, thank Lord. you for this assignment. Yes. I thank you for trusting me with your people. Yes. And God, I pray right now that every word gives you glory, yes. not me, God. Yes. God, I thank you for this day, Lord. And Lord, please bless my feet. <laughs> because I decided to be cute and not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> God, yes. You're in control of all things. <laughs> and I believe that yes. you can be in control of that. Listen, God can do it. Yes. You don't have to. You don't ask. Yes. All righty. So, as we stated, the story of Noah. Noah and the ark. Everybody in here, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this story. You've heard this story. And I remember as a child watching the movie, the reenactment of this, this um, story. And one of the things that struck me that was so interesting was the demeanor of the individuals as they emerged from the ark. The movie kind of depicted everybody of like they were just so happy and relieved to be off of this ark. But as an adult, when I evaluate the story, I'm just like, I don't know, call me crazy, but I don't think that that was their reaction. I don't think that that was their initial reaction getting off of this art. 
So I want to take a moment for us to just remember what happened during that time. Noah and his family members have been on the ark for 370 days. 370 days. And while they were in the ark, so imagine when the flood initially started, Noah and his family member were in the ark, the door is closed, and they're hearing sounds that they've never heard before. They're hearing lightning, the power of flashing of lightning. They're hearing thunder. They're feeling the powerful winds blowing. They're hearing rain. All of these things never happened before on the earth. So all of a sudden they're sitting there and not only are they hearing the elements of, the, of nature, they're also hearing familiar voices. Mm -hmm. Familiar voices that I imagine all those individuals that made fun of Noah all these years, you know, this man is crazy. He's building something that nobody knows. That they were frantically banging mm -hmm. on the ark. Mm -hmm. Let us in, Noah, let us in, Noah. And the Bible says that Noah was a righteous man. So him being a righteous man, I can conclude that he had a good heart, right? So if you're a righteous person with a good heart and you hear people who are in need and you can help them, wouldn't you want to help them? Yes. But God took that opportunity away from Noah and everybody on, on the ark. Because it said um, in Genesis chapter 7, verse 16, it said that God was the one that shut the door. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we know from scripture that whatever door God shuts, no man can open. No man can open. So here's this righteous man sitting on this ark, hearing familiar voices who are wailing for help and feeling helpless. He's sitting in that, feeling helpless. So with the images that I just described, it's easy for me to conclude that Noah was consumed with fear. He was consumed with anxiety. And I believe too that there were some people on the, the ark with him who were probably in a state of disbelief. Because if we recall the story of Noah, this ark wasn't built in a week, in a month, in a year. Um, biblical scholars believe that it took 75 to 120 years for the ark to be built. So all this time, they're thinking like, wait a minute, are you telling me that what God spoke to the patriarch of our family, uh, let's say 120 years ago, is now coming to pass? They're all sitting there in a state of shock. So now they're... We, we're in chapter 9 where it says that God was the one that opened the door mm -hmm. and God is the one that's calling them forth saying, you know, emerge out of the ark. You mean to tell me I've been in this place 370 days that's been my safety net, that's been my refuge from all the disaster. Now you want me to come out? Mm -hmm. So Noah and his family members, they emerge out of the ark in a world that they did not recognize. In a world, mind you, that did not have any of their other family members or friends in it. In a world where their whole community, there was no schools, no places of worship, nothing except the ark. Just the thought of that image is enough to give me anxiety. So why would we not think that no of them was experiencing anxiety? <laughs> I know that they were stressed. So here's the thing. I feel like my assessment of their emotion is actually accurate, not only based on what I think, but also how God responded to them. And this is what I mean. It said that for the first time, God repeated this word, a word that he had never repeated before. And that's the word covenant. Mm. Covenant. God repeated the word covenant seven times in chapter nine from verses eight through 17. So let me explain it like this. So if I were to go to the doctor and you don't know my medical history, right? So I went to the doctor and I came back, I was like, they prescribed me insulin. What do you think I have? Diabetes. Diabetes. So this is what I'm saying. God repeated himself seven times 
because he knew that their diagnosis was fear and anxiety. He knew the prescription that would fit the diagnosis. And the number one thing that somebody who's dealing with anxiety, the number one thing that they need is reassurance. So these eight individuals, like I said, they just went through this, the most devastating, widespread judgment God had ever inflicted on humanity. To say that they were scared is an understatement, mm -hmm. is an understatement. But let me explain how awesome God is and why I love him so much. Because of his nature, his nature. God is a God that's so gracious. And the reason why I say he's so gracious is because he could have ignored their emotions. He could have ignored the elephant in the room. But he went ahead and addressed it head on. And what Noah, I mean, what God was pretty much saying to Noah was this. Listen, Noah, I know you're anxious. I know you're scared. But listen to me, Noah. I don't need you to allow those emotions to get in, in between our relationship. I don't need you to do that. Noah, I need you to pay attention. Listen. You know me as a promise keeper. You know me, Noah. You know me as a promise keeper. So the same way that Noah trusted God when God told him to build an ark, something that he had never seen before. The same way that Noah trusted God to that he would save his family members. God was saying, Noah. I need you to trust me just the same way. The same way that you did everything I asked you to do without questioning me. I need you to do that too. So God was pretty much saying that, Noah, I know that you're stressed out because you're the patriarch of the family and everybody is coming to you asking you questions that you don't have answers to. And I know, Noah, what's in the back of your mind. You're thinking, wait a minute, all of this happened because of sin. Mm -hmm. All of this happened because people rebelled against God. Oh my goodness. I know I'm capable of sinning. Mm -hmm. I know my family members capable of sinning. Are we going to be next? Mm -hmm. I know that's what's in the back of your mind, Noah. Mm -hmm. So God addressed his emotion. And that's the thing that I want us to remember. Just because you know God. Just because God called you. Just because you're walking in your purpose doesn't mean you don't have human emotions. So God was pretty much telling Noah, listen, the thing that you, you feared and you saw appearing in the sky, you know, the clouds, it's gonna come again. It's gonna reappear. But this is what I'm telling you. I'm putting my promise in the midst of the clouds. I'm putting my promise in the midst of the cloud. So Noah, when you see the water rising, and when you hear the thunder, when you, when you see the lightning, I'm telling you, Noah, if you get caught up in what you see, PTSD is going to kick in, and your emotions is going to just have its way with you. Listen to me, Noah. He kept trying to get his attention. He said, listen to me, Noah. This time, when you look up at the clouds, though, mm -hmm. I have put my promise yeah. in there. Yeah. 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 My rainbow. Yeah. Yes. Whose rainbow? Yes. His rainbow. Yes. His rainbow. Yes. My rainbow. So in the midst of life's um, clouds that were forming, <laughs> even though God's promise appeared mm -hmm. alongside something that triggered a traumatic memory for most. I mean, for Noah, God was saying, "Noah, I am a promise keeper." Mm -hmm. Noah, remember, remember, remember who I am. Remember my track record. That everything I said, uh -huh. I did. Yes. Yes. So when you feel anxiety rising, I need you to remember who I am. What God was doing, this is why I love him so much, is he was giving Noah strategy. He was telling him, listen, before this even happens, 
This is how you are supposed to respond. That's how God will do. He was preparing Noah and saying that, keep your eyes on my promise and not what you see. What God is saying to us today is that we are in a new season. Yep. Yeah. We are in a new season. Yeah. And guess what? This new season is not going to look anything like the previous season. It's not going to look anything like the previous season. And I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but what God is saying that there are certain people I'm not going to allow them. I'm not going to even give you the option. So if she don't invite you to the party, praise God. That's God that's blocking I'm not yeah. allowing it. So many of us, we can honestly say, we may be sitting here with smiles on our faces and stuff, but we have been through some devastating oh events yes. that yes. truly yes. has yes. rocked our faith. Yes. Yes. And if we're honest, quite a few of us don't really trust God. Mm. We don't really trust God the way we say we trust Him. Yes. You know? Quite a few of us will even say, I don't know him as no promise keeper. He ain't kept no promise to me. He could have saved so and so, he didn't. Quite a few will say that because the thing is, many of us, the only promise that we're willing to accept from God is the promise of a pain free life. It's not possible. It's not possible. What I want to let you know today, because like I said, God is so gracious. He sees your pain. He sees your pain. He acknowledges your human emotion. He knows that you are on the verge of throwing in the towel. If one more thing happened, God, some of you. Yes, Lord. Mm. Some of you are in the verge of throwing in the towel because you feel like I don't have no more energy to fight. You are afraid of your new season. You are afraid to get off the ark. Because just like Noah, what does that mean? That means you got to start all over from scratch. I truly believe that there are somebody, if not multiple individuals in here who's battling. When I say it's a battle, you are battling every day, every hour, every minute. You are battling anxiety. You go to sleep, but you can't rest. You are exhausted because it seems like one storm after another, after yeah, another. Yeah, and it's like, God, when is yeah, enough Jesus. enough? All right, come on. It's like, it's like life just keep hitting you and knocking the breath out of you. Yes. Anybody been there? Yes. yes. I've been there. Yes, I've been there. Yes. That's why I can't stand before you and act like I don't know. I can't stand before you and act as if I have the answers as to why God allowed certain things to happen or why he had to allow you to go through that storm. I can't stand here and act like I have the answers. But what I do know is that God wants us to be transparent with him. He wants you to admit that you're afraid. Mm -hmm. And what God hears from some of our hearts today, there's somebody in here whose heart is whispering to God saying, I want to trust you, God, but I'm scared. And he whispers back to you and said, I'm trustworthy. Check my record. Look up. There's somebody else in here who is whispering to God saying, God, I feel so alone. He whispers back to you and say, no one will ever love you the way that I do. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Look up. 
Another, he says, another says to God, but God, you don't understand. I've lost everything. Mm -hmm. I lost my job. I, I'm about to lose my home. I have no money in my account. I've lost everything, God. He whispers back and says, my child, mm. I am your provider. Yes. I am yes. your source. Yes. Look up. Mm. Promise Worship Center remind you that if he kept his promise mm. to a man named Noah yes. who has been dead now for over 4,000 years yes. is he not able to keep his promise to you? Yes. As I wrap up I want to talk about one of the things that really really amazed me about this man named Noah one of the things that amazed me about him is stated in um, chapter 8 verse 20 and this is what it says. It says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offering on it. The first thing that Noah did was worship. Mm. The first thing that this man Noah did was worship. Worship. How in the midst, in the midst of walking out and realizing that everybody's gone. In the midst of walking out and realizing that I have to start all over God. In the midst of uncertainty. Noah decided. What did he do? He decided. He decided to worship God. Why? Because Noah remembered that God is a promise keeper. Yes, yes, yes. He remembered. Yes. As humans, we have this tendency of forgetting, having a short memory. And I remember Janet Jackson many years ago had this song of What Have You Done For Me Lately, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We all know that song. We're not too safe and not know that song. Right. We all know that song. And the sad thing is, that's how we relate to God. Mm -hmm. So as I wrap up, I want to go down memory lane to help us remember the times that God kept us. Mm -hmm. to remember the times that he was there for us as our promise keeper. Yeah. So remember when... And some of y'all, this may not even be a long memory. Remember when you didn't have two coins to rub together. You had lost your job. Your bank account was in the negative. You had nothing. But somehow or another, you've never gone to bed hungry a day in your life. He's a promise keeper. Yes, he is. So remember when you received that devastating news, the call from the doctor, the dreaded call that everybody fears with that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. a, a diagnosis that's wiped out so many people. Mm -hmm. But somehow or another, you're not only here, but you're stronger than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. He is a promise yeah. 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 So even though yeah. that relationship fell apart, mm -hmm. your heart was broken. God had, you hear me, somebody need to hear this. This need to register in your spirit because you've been moaning over a relationship that God said. Listen, God had to remove that joker out of your life. Listen, he was a roadblock to your purpose. He had to move because you made an alliance with somebody God never approved of. Yeah. But guess what? In the midst of that, God had his hands on you. He never took his hands off of you. And we know that when God has his hands on you, I'm telling you right now, the best is yet to come. Why? Because he's a promise keeper. Remember this virus. 2019 mm -hmm. that took over the world, that took the lives of many worldwide, including some of our friends and family members. Mm -hmm. A virus that the news keep reporting and putting fear in all of our hearts. Mm -hmm. 
but somehow or another, yes. we are still standing yes. here today. Yes. And not only are we standing here today, we are safeguarded. Yes. We are protected. Yes. We are unharmed. Yes. He is a promise keeper. Don't allow your pain, the pain of what you've gone through, yes. the pain that you're currently going through, yes. to allow you to keep you from me. Yes. It's time that you look up yes. and remember that I am a promise keeper. Yes. Promise Worship Center, continue, continue, continue to stand on the promises of God. Never forget what you have access to. I take my seat. For those who are weighted down by anxiety and fear because of everything that you've gone through, everything that you've lost, all the people you have lost, know that the same way that God restored the earth after the flood, he is willing he is able yes. to restore your broken heart and yes. give you back your peace of mind. Yes. Keep looking up. Never forget that he is what? Thank you. Bye.